Hello and welcome to today's lecture on right of private defense. The general exceptions contained in section 76 to 106 make an offense a non-offense. They are of universal application and for the sake of brevity of expression, instead of repeating in every section that the definition is to be taken subject to the exceptions, the legislature by section 6 IPC enacted that all the definitions must be regarded as subject to the general exceptions. Therefore, general exceptions are part of the definition of every offense contained in IPC. But the burden to prove their existence lies on the accused. All these defenses which an accused can raise as a defense are provided in Chapter 4 of the IPC. This chapter has consolidated all the defenses at one place which were following at various places under English law. To know these sections, it is essential to determine the liability of a person. These defenses are classified as excusable and justifiable defenses, depending on the nature of the defense. The right of private defense comes there in the justifiable defense. In this category, the doer laws knows that he is violating the law, but simultaneously he has the justification to exercise this defense, because the object is to repel the aggression on the body or property of the person who exercises the right. These are the exceptions contained in the Indian Penal Code. Number one, mistake. Number two, judicial and executive acts. Number three, accident. Number four, necessity and compulsion. Number five, infancy. Number six, insanity. Number seven, drunkenness. Number eight, consent. And number nine, right of private defense, which is of person and of property. Let's have a look at the historical perspective. In early times, it was considered better not to kill or injure an assailant when one could defend himself by the peaceful method of running to a place of safety. This was the rule popularly known as rule of retreat. This practice was in vogue for a very long time in certain Western countries. The rule reflects the universal justice in the domain of self-defense. In case of an attack, the victim should run away to a place of safety now, in view of changed social conditions, the emphasis with respect to the retreat rule is also changing. The invention of firearms and ammunition in modern times has eliminated the application of the retreat rule, which never had been considered to be a condition precedent to avail of the plea of self-defense. Professor Kenny remarks that there is a duty to retreat is a disputed question in England today. Similarly, in USA, the trend has considerably changed and the present weight of authority is towards the rule that the assaulted is entitled to stand his ground and repel force by force. If a person is threatened with death or other grievous hurt in open space, away from safety, it is quite ridiculous to require him to retreat as that will result in a certain death. Shamsul Huda explains that this right is accepted and recognized in every system of law. This right varies in inverse ratio to the capacity of state to save a person. The basic duty of the state is to safeguard its citizens from any aggression. But it is not possible to provide safety to its subjects at all times. And therefore, individuals can safeguard their body and property. There is no scope for applicability of retreat rule to Indian position as the penal code contains exhaustive provisions on the subject. In Alingal versus Rao, rejecting the rule, it was laid down that assaulted need not modulate his defense step by step according to the attack unless the attack is over. He is entitled to secure his victory as long as the assault continues. He need not run away. Justice Arajit Pasayat succinctly pointed out the private defense concept in James Martin versus State of Kerala in the following words. Self-preservation is the prime instant of every human being. The right of private defense is a recognized right in the criminal law. Therefore, Section 96 of the IPC provides the right of private defense by saying nothing is an offense which is due in exercise of right of private defense. The question where exercise of such rights is claimed whether the Lakshman Rekha applicable to its exercise has been exceeded. Section 99 IPC delineates the extent to which the right may be exercised. 
The right of private defense is now recognized in every free, civilized, and democratic society. The right is, however, preventive and not punitive. With this background, the provisions of Section 96 to 106 dealing with the right of private defense are to be construed. The fascicle of Sections 96 to 106 codify the entire law relating to right of private defense of person and property, including the extent of and limitation to exercise of such right. This lecture deals in particular, number one, right of private defense, which is section 96 and 106. The object of this lecture is to focus on the meaning and concept of right of private defense. Section 96 of the code declares that nothing is an offense which is done in the exercise of right of private defense. The right under this section is available against the person or persons from whom imminent danger to life or property is apprehended. This rule is available against an act, which is an offence under the code. An aggressor cannot claim the right of self-defence, further the defence is not available when there is a free fight between the parties. In Lakshman vs State of Urissa, it was held that the right of private defence is available only to one who is suddenly confronted with immediate necessity of averting an impending danger, not of his own creation. The necessity must be real, present, or apparent. In Gordhan versus the state of Rajasthan, it was observed that the right of private defense should be based on positive material. It cannot be made out merely on surmises and conjectures. The presence of injuries on the accused is only a circumstance to be taken into consideration while evaluating the plea of self-defense. Apart from that, the disproportion of injuries received by the members of the complainant party on one hand and the accused on the other hand is a factor to be taken into consideration. Therefore, the plea of private defence should not be readily assumed merely because the accused has sustained insignificant injuries. Section 97 to 102, 104 and 108 Right of private defence of the body According to Section 97 IPC, every person has a right to defend his own body or property or another against any offence affecting the human body. In Indian law, even a stranger may defend the person or property of another. But in English law, there must exist some special relationship to defend the person or property of another. For example, master and servant, husband and wife, etc. This, under the English law, is called right of self-defense. In R versus Rose, the accused shot and killed his father, whom he believed to be cutting the throat of his mother. The accused was allowed to write a private defense to protect his mother against his father's act. Section 97 further provides that the right of private defense is available to defend a person as well as his property. Section 97 lays down the extent of right of private defence which is subject to the limitations laid down in Section 99. The Section 97 lays down that a citizen should not act as a coward while exercising this right. Bentham says that public safety is concern of every citizen and he should act as the natural protector of every other person. Private defence of person or body against offences affecting the human body. In Nurmia, 1945, the accused who was attacked by a number of men armed with various weapons snatched away a weapon from one of them and struck him with the weapon causing his death. It was held that the accused had a right of private defence of body, although at the time the deceased man was unarmed. Private defence of property against theft, mischief, robbery or criminal trespass or attempt to commit any of these offences. Loknath versus Rahas Biora, it was observed that an illegal seizure of cattle with a view to impound them is theft, and persons attempting to resist the seizure by force act in the exercise of right of private defence of property, and are therefore entitled to defence under this section. Sections 97 to 102 and 106 deal with the former while section 97 to 99, 103 to 105 deal with the latter. Section 98. 
right to defend against the act of insane, intoxicate, etc. Section 98 provides that what may not be offences because of age, physical or mental incapacity of the aggressor is no bar to the exercise of private defence. Hence, the right can be exercised even against an infant, the insane and intoxicated person or one suffering under misconception of facts. For example, Z under the influence of madness attempts to kill A. Z is guilty of no offence. But A has the same right of private defence which he would have if Z were sane. Section 99. Limitations on the right of private defence. The right of private defence is subject to limitations laid down by Section 99 Indian Penal Code. There is no right of private defence against an act which does not reasonably cause the apprehension of death or of grievous hurt, if done or attempted to be done by a public servant acting in good faith under the colour of his office, though the act may not be strictly justifiable by law. There is no right of private defence in cases in which there is time to have recourse to the protection of the public authorities. The right of private defence in no case extends to the inflicting of more harm than it is necessary to inflict for the purpose of defence. Here are the two explanations that further explain this point. Number one, person is not deprived of the right of private defence against act done or attempted to be done by a public servant as such unless he knows or has reason to believe that the person doing the act is such public servant. Number two, a person is not deprived of the right of private defence against an act done or attempted to be done by the direction of the public servant unless he knows or has reason to believe that the person doing the act is acting by such direction or unless such person states the authority under which he acts or if he has authority in writing unless he produces such authority if demanded. Thus it becomes clear that the person is deprived of the right of private defence against a public servant if the act is done in good faith, the act was done under the colour of office and there were reasonable grounds to establish the identity or authority of direction of a public servant. The right of self-defence can however be exercised Number one, when the public servant reasonably causes apprehension of grievous hurt or when the public servant does not act in good faith. When the person exercising the rights does not know or have reason to believe that the aggressor is a public servant or one acting under the authority or direction of a public servant. In Krishna vs. State of Madras, the accused, a trader, abducted and assaulted the sales tax officer who inspected the shop and to seize the accounts. The accused pleaded the defence of the right of private defence. He held the accused guilty and did not allow him the defence. Section 100 of the Code provides for the circumstances under which the right of private defence extends to voluntarily causing the death of a person. However, the right is subject to restrictions as laid down under Section 99 of the Code. The death of the assailant can be caused in these circumstances. Number one, when such an assault as may reasonably cause the apprehension that death will otherwise be the consequences of such assault. Number two, such an assault as may be reasonably cause the apprehension that grievous hurt will otherwise be the consequences of such assault. Number three, an assault with the intention of committing rape. Number four, an assault with the intention of gratifying unnatural lust. Number five, an assault with the intention of kidnapping or abduction. Number six, an assault with the intention of wrongfully confining a person under circumstances which may reasonably cause him to apprehend that he will be unable to have recourse to the public authorities for his release. In Karamat Hussain versus Emperor, the accused, in order to save or protect his sister from merciless beating by her husband, intervened and killed him. It was held that the accused was entitled to the right of private defence under such circumstances. 
Similarly, in Vishwanath versus state of Uttar Pradesh, the deceased went to his father-in-law's house and dragged his wife with a view to take her against her will. The accused on seeing his sister being dragged gave a blow with a knife to the deceased, who died immediately. It was held that when sister is being abducted, the brother, in the exercise of right of private defense, can kill the abductor. Section 101, when harm other than death may be caused. Section 101 of the Code provides that in the absence of the circumstances laid down in Section 100, the right of private defense is limited to causing of any harm other than death. This right again is subject to the exceptions under Section 99. Commencement of right of private defense. Section 102 says that when right of private defense commences, this right commences as soon as a reasonable apprehension of danger to the body arises from an attempt or threat to commit the offense. The right continues as long as the apprehension of danger continues. Section 103. When the right of private defense of property extends to causing death. Section 103 justifies killing the aggressor and exercising the right of private defense in cases of robbery, housebreaking by night, theft, mischief or house trespass, causing apprehension of death or grievous hurt. Section 104 lays down that if the theft, mischief or criminal trespass does not answer the description given in section 103, then the right of private defense of property does not extend to causing death, but it extends subject again to section 99 to voluntarily causing any harm other than death. So a pickpocketer in exercise of right of private defense cannot be killed. Section 105 says that the right of private defense of property commences when a reasonable apprehension of danger to the property commences. Finally, Section 106 provides for the right of private defense against deadly assault when there is a risk of harm to innocent person. Let's look at an example. A is attacked by a mob who attempts to murder him. He cannot effectually exercise his right of private defense without firing on the mob. And he cannot fire without risk of harming young children who are mingled within the mob. A commits no offense if by so firing he harms any of the children. So that was our today's lecture on right of private defense. Thank you for being patient and have a good day.